The following is a presentation of the Texas Terror and UPN 20 Sports. the Summit in Houston, Texas, for the first game ever of arena football in Houston for the inaugural season of the Texas Terror. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Patrick, and joining me on UPN 20 all season, bringing you Terror Action, former Longhorn and Houston Oiler lineman Doug Dawson. Doug, this is fun, and I tell you what, it's action-packed. It is going to be action-packed, and we are going to have a lot of fun tonight, Dan. We're playing on a 50-yard field. Seven, seven of these eight players are playing both ways. They're going to get, they're going to have to be in great shape. John Paul Young, the coach, called it 60 minutes in the red zone. They throw the ball about 85% of the time. We're going to have a ton of scoring, and it's just going to be a fun night to play football. A lot of familiar names on the Texas Terror to those of you who have followed uh, football here in Texas, including the head coach, John Paul Young, formerly of the Love You Blue days when he was coaching under Bum Phillips and has a lot of bum in him. Uh, we talked to uh, John Paul about the strengths of this football team, and here's a typical bum answer. Well, I can't think of any right now. I tell you what, Doug, he, he learned from Bum how to answer questions, and we ask him, now, what have you been working on all week, Coach? Everything. <laughs> and they have been assembling a team from, from the beginning, forming the organization in just a couple of months to get ready for tonight's opener with the Minnesota Fighting Pike. A lot of familiar names uh, on the roster, including quarterback Jimmy Klingler, who as a sophomore at the University of Houston broke all sophomore quarterbacking records in college football. And here's a guy who is happy to be back in his hometown playing pro football. It's a dream come true for me to be back playing in Houston uh, professionally. And you know, I grew up playing here uh, ever since I was five years old and I hope to retire here. Texas Terra football, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's a 14-game season, seven at home, seven on the road. Doug, could you have played both ways? I would have had to drop a little weight, Dan. This is These guys are in great shape. They're great athletes, and we're excited about uh, this football season and bringing it to the fans at home. Well, we're excited having you as our broadcast partner, and I have found out something, folks, that offensive linemen, even when they put on a suit, put on the silicone so no one can grab a hold of them. We'll be right back with the opening kickoff with Texas Terra football. Texas Terror on UPN 20 is sponsored by Bill Hurd Chevrolet Sugarland. Whatever it takes, the official dealership for the Texas Terror. And welcome back live at the summit in Houston. Texas Terror football about to begin and Doug. We're going to have a great crowd on hand tonight, and it's going to be a lot of fun, as we talked about in the open. These are fine athletes, some of the finest college players in football. They play hard. They take a pounding out there, going both ways, hitting the boards, and the folks who have never seen it an arena football game are really going to, I think, be surprised of the electricity in the game. Well, I'll tell you, the electricity was already evident by the by the uh, the smoke up here and by the introductions they did a great job it was a dark house and they brought everybody in and the fans were going crazy and these guys do have to be in great shape they're going both ways and it's going to be a high scoring game we're excited about it let's uh, let's take a look at the lineup so you can get familiar with your texas terror football team starting on offense corey brandon out of oregon state on the line along with kelvin harris out of miami and steve clark out of the university of houston one wide receiver spot out of Lamar, Chris Ford. Offensive specialist, and we'll explain what an offensive specialist is as we go through the game. That will be Bo Adams out of Texas Tech. At fullback, former Texas A&M linebacker, Steve Solari. And at the other wide receiver spot, Wade Hopkins, that Oiler fans may remember catching that 
ball from Bucky Richardson in the Japan Bowl to beat the Dallas Cowboys a couple of years ago and a quarterback Jimmy Klingler on the defense for the Texas Terror the players keep their jerseys on just move to the other side and become defensive players Corey Brandon Kelvin Harris and Clark stay on the line so Larry the fullback becomes a linebacker Wade Hopkins the winger slot man becomes the other linebacker and only one linebacker can rush in arena football that most of the time will be Solari and he'll rush on either side of the, the nose guard Harris unless the quarterback goes out of the pocket then he can go to the outside in the backfield it's Walker, it's Maurice Smith, the two defensive specialists, and Chris Ford. The Minnesota lineup for you, and both teams' expansion teams. This year, there are 15 teams in arena football. These two expansion teams, Sunbold, Kurlikowski, and Johnson on the line. Ashby, Levine, Jackson, and Hawkins. And at quarterback, Ricky Fogey out of Minnesota. On the defense for Minnesota. Sunvold, Krolikowski, and Johnson move over. Hawkins and Jackson take the linebacker spot up. They bring in their defensive specialist. Lunsford, Ashby, and Fuller are the other two defensive backs. Eight men on eight. It's man-on-man -man football, Doug. That's the way that arena football is designed to maximize players going head-to-head. -head. Yes, they, they do not have much zone, uh, zone coverage at all. They basically man up and play man-to-man -man defense. That's why you have some big scoring. The linebackers, Dan, they have to stay in the box. The linebackers are not allowed to drop into zone coverage at all, where, which is a real advantage to the offense on the slant patterns. There's nobody to take it away from underneath. So it is going to be an exciting, high-scoring football game. Jimmy Klingler, of course, will be starting at quarterback uh, tonight. And uh, we talked with Jimmy before the game about what his plan is for tonight to defeat the Minnesota Fighting Pike. Offensive the slant pattern. To do is win the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, our big men, you know, got have to win, have to keep be able to keep them off of me and have to be able to get pressure on their quarterback. And then defensively, we can't give up the long ball. But on offense, we have to be able to, to complete the long ball. So, you know, there's a couple key things that I think we need to do in order to win the game. You know, Doug, I think one of the advantages tonight for the Texas Terror, they've had two preseason games. They lost both games uh, last week at Phoenix on the first game here against Anaheim. But Minnesota has only had one preseason game. So I think that's an advantage going in. But quite frankly, both teams, expansion teams, there are some experienced arena football players on both rosters. But this is a feeling out process for both teams to get used to playing with each other. Yeah, Dan, and the Texas Terror in both of the first halves their first pre of their two preseason games really did a pretty good job were in the game and they were just I think John Paul Young was really looking at looking at personnel and trying to decide who he was going to keep and so they really weren't trying to win the football games does look like we are about to receive we won the won the uh, the kick I mean won the toss and we are receiving Dan Mike Vanderjack will kick off and as we go through the game tonight folks again we are aware that a lot of you are watching arena for football for the first time so we'll go over the rules throughout the game it's off the net that means it's playable the ball is always live off the net Bo Adams up to about the five yard line now when the ball is kicked off the net the kicking team cannot go beyond the five yard line they must give the receiving team a chance to catch the ball off the net however if it comes off on a kooky carom and hits the ground, it's live. In other words, the kicking team could recover it in the end zone for a touchdown. First and ten from the five. Chris Ford is one receiver, split to the near side, the bottom of the screen. In motion, Wade Hopkins. Klingler has Chris Ford on about the nine for a complete. And, Doug, you'll see a lot of fast passes in this game. Three, four, five-step drop. You don't have time to look off too many receivers. And another thing that you'll notice, folks, as you watch the game, the hash marks really come into play. As you can see, the ball is on the near side, close to the wall. The field only 85 feet wide, 50 yards long. So that, you know, if you're on defense, you might be thinking the play is going to come to the wide side of the field. Hopkins in motion again. Klingler back. And off the hands of Steve Solari, the fullback who played three years as a linebacker at Texas A&M starting 26 games. He was pretty wide open, Dan, and the reason is because they brought their Mike Backer up the middle. And the Mike Backer is who is instructed to pick up the fullback. And so, therefore, if he had completed that ball, there wasn't anybody that was going to be able to tackle him right away. So they need to, they need to take advantage of that when the Mike Backer does not cover man-to-man -man the fullback. 
So being, bring up a third and about a five and a half. Bo Adams, the offensive specialist in motion. Klingler looking for Bo, and he's brought down on his own one yard line. The pressure up the middle. And remember, in arena football, you cannot rush to the to the outside as a linebacker, but the lineman can move to the outside. Yeah, Nate Johnson made the sack there, came around uh, the end, and they had kind of a stunt in the middle. And they didn't do a very good job picking it up, and uh, it is fourth down, and we noticed there is not a punter out there, Dan. There's no punting in arena football. So on fourth down, no matter where you are, you go for the field goal. Richard DeFelice out of North Texas kicked one from here two weeks ago and last week. He's had a 61-yarder. This will be about 64 yards. It's long enough. It's off to the right. Actually, it would have come up short had it been straight. That will come out to the five-yard line. Well, we saw two weeks ago when Richard DeFelice made that, we saw a little more leg that time. He didn't get all of it that time and uh, kicked it a little bit short, a little bit to the wide to the right. I like, Doug, the fact that there is no punting. It's one of the things in the That's NFL fun. that slows down the game, and here you have a chance to score from everywhere. And again, it looked unlikely to kick the field goal, but he's done it twice already of distances of 59 and 61 yards. And we're talking about goalposts that are only nine feet wide, half the distance of the NFL. Minnesota about to put it in play on offense. Ricky Foggy looking deep. No one back there. And that's a souvenir, 75 bucks worth. When the football goes in the stands, folks, it's yours. And they are fighting for it, aren't they, Dan? <laughs> they realize they don't, in, in the NFL, they don't fight for it like that because they have to throw the ball back in. And they are booing because the man that y'all are watching took it away from the poor young child who I think grabbed it after the fact. <laughs> Speaking of slowing down the game, Dan, you know, they have not stopped the clock yet. And they do not stop the clock until, I guess, late in, this, late in the first half and late in the, in the game. One minute to go in the half and at the end of the game. Second and ten. Foggy incomplete. Bring up third and ten. Yeah, the clock never stops until we get to the last minute of the half and the end of the game. The Texas Terror made up of primarily Texas players, including nine players from the Southwest Conference and four from Texas Tech alone. <laughs> All are giving us their various hand signals. Of course, Doug, you being a Longhorn. Hook them horns. Hook them horns. <laughs> Third and ten for Minnesota. Foggy back in his own end zone. Incomplete once again, and that will put them in a fourth down kicking position from their end zone. Five, Corey Brandon really gave, gave great pressure. He, you know, beat, beat his, uh, his, his guard beat his guard inside and came up the middle really got held a little bit but put some great pressure on the quarterback make him throw it a little bit before a little bit before that he wanted to and uh, it's fourth down and it looks like we're gonna get the ball back Corey Brandon number 97 out of Oregon State Mike Vanderjack this will be about a 60 uh, the end zones are eight yards deep so you're looking at about a 61 yard attempt Bo Adams back in the end zone for the terror Bo has it in the end zone. He's got some room to bring it out. He's up to the 10 and brought down on the 13. We'll see where they mark it on about the 13-yard line. And the Texas Terror will put it in play with 10-13 to go in the first quarter. That was a good return. Bo, Bo Adams basically just took it right back up the middle. You only the, the field's only 85 feet wide, which means you really don't have the lateral movement that you could that you might have in, a, in the NFL. So basically, Bo Adams did what he should do and basically took it right up the middle and got some great yardage. And the 13-yard line in this league, you're almost to midfield. Up on the top is Chris Ford, Wade Hopkins, Bo Adams in motion. Klingler knocked out of his hand. Let's see what the officials rule here, and they're going to call it down on the one. I was afraid Doug, he was not uh, in throwing motion. No, he wasn't in throwing motion. William Freeney came up the middle. And the fullback, Kevin Wolfolk, is responsible for picking that up. And they seem to be flaring him out. A tackle for the pike, number 33, William Freeney. The officials tonight, uh, Steve Pomone, Mike Cochran, and Daryl Lefwich. Illegal formation. The end number 84 was lined up too wide. That's a three-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, 
first down. So the Texas Terror get a break. Uh, in arena football, penalties are three, five, and eight yards. And that was an illegal formation, as you heard on the call. And so instead of having it on their own one, the Texas Terror will put it in play on their own 16. Second and seven. Chris Ford out to the top. Wade Hopkins in close bow action in motion. Off to Bo Adams who juggles the ball. Picked up. And it's going to be a Minnesota touchdown. I was looking for a flag, Doug. No flag. Adrian Lunsford broke through. It looked like a couple of guys broke through on the left side over there. And, you know, they picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown. Bo Adams uh, fumbled the ball in a similar fashion in the first preseason game here two weeks ago on the opening uh, on the opening play, it was a pitch out. The same play from Klingler to Adams, and he fumbled that ball. Uh, and if Bo continues to do that, then his uh, backup, Robert Hall, out of Texas Tech, who plays the other offensive specialist position, is going to get more playing time. You can't drop a ball in this league. There's too much scoring to give it up inside your own 15, 20-yard line. No, you can't, and he, especially when you're not getting hit. You know, just basically, you have to concentrate. There's a timeout on the field. And we'll be right back with Texas Terror football as they take on the Minnesota Fighting Pike right here on UPN 20. And we're back live on the summit. Dan Patrick and Doug Dawson with you on UPN 20 tonight. The inaugural season of arena football in Houston. And Texas finds themselves down six to nothing, waiting for the point after attempt from Mike Vanderjack of the Minnesota Fighting Pike. snap and it's off to the left it hits the metal iron post that holds up what they call the slack net and that will leave the score six to nothing Doug here's a look at the fumble by Bo Adams well Jimmy Klingler pitches to Bo Adams and Bo just is looking downfield doesn't doesn't catch the ball before he takes off running we mentioned Dan before you really cannot do that and number three Adrian Lunsford picked it up and just they just had a simple easy touchdown and you can't make many mistakes like that in this game or, or Texas isn't going to win the football game. And, and as you can see on the replay Minnesota had pretty good penetration and I think that that's why Corey or rather uh, Bo Adams took his uh, eye off the ball. He saw three uh, big guys ready to to drive him under the turf and he's only five seven. Yes well so often. The quarterback, a lot of times the quarterback doesn't pitch it perfect. Well, that looked like it was perfect. Really looked like it hit him in the in the face mask or the chest. There you have a good view of the two nets. The goalposts are nine feet wide, half the distance of the NFL. They're 18 and a half in the NFL. The crossbar 15 feet high, only 10 in the NFL. And two nets, 30 by 32. Bo Adams juggled it out of bounds. That will bring it out to the five as it came off the nets. And again, on kicks, they encourage an arena football to have run back. So if you attempt to run it out of the end zone and you're tackled in the end zone, it still comes out to the five-yard line. So if at all possible, if you can field it cleanly off the net or directly in the air, they want you to bring it out. So you really have not a lot to lose unless you think you're going to be brought down on the one or two-yard line to attempt to bring it out. Lloyd Hill out of Texas Tech, number 80. Wide receiver into the game. Bo Adams in motion. There's a flag down. Looks like it will go against uh, Minnesota. Lloyd Hill. You know, we talked about the athletes in arena football, Doug. Jimmy Klingler broke Fire every record. Encroachment. Defense. Number 69. Three-yard penalty. It's still Jimmy Klingler broke down. every record as a uh, sophomore. As a, uh, as a quarterback at the University of Houston, Lloyd Hill, number 80 out of Tech, the all-time pass receiver in the history of the Southwest Conference, some fine athletes. And some miscommunication there. He was looking for Chris Ford, who was running down the field. Chris Ford, one of the players on the Texas Terror with arena football experience, three seasons with the Orlando Predators, one of the better teams in arena football, Orlando and Tampa in the Arena Bowl last year. And Chris Ford was the first player selected in the in the uh, player draft this year expansion draft trips out to the left Jimmy Klingler now Bo Adams moves out to the top Klingler under some pressure and Lloyd Hill drops the ball there's a flag down 
looked like it might be in that um, in that position that I used to hate to see a flag, Dan. It's like it could be. Adrian Lunsford, number 24. No, it's it's uh, as, as, as offensive linemen like, it's, it's on the other guys. Yes, it is. And we'll get the call here. Illegal outside rush. Defense, number 33. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Dan, what happened on that number 33 from the Minnesota Fighting Pike, William Freeney? ended up rushing outside, and he has to rush in between the guard and the center as a linebacker. He cannot rush outside, and that's what the call was. First and 10, Jimmy Klingler back. Sets up a little screen for Kevin Wolfo. Complete up to the 22. Kevin was the leading rusher with the Charlotte Rage last year, also picked up in the draft by the Texas Terror. And when we say leading rusher, that was 56 yards last year. There's not a lot of rushing in arena football. In fact, no one has rushed for more than 100 yards in, in one game. Of course, the short field. The, the, this screen pass was set up perfectly, and it looked like he had a ton of field, and Freeney came over and barely made a shoestring tackle from behind, or Wolfolk would have gotten a lot more yards. It's second and about two. Flag down. Klingler's arm hit at the line of scrimmage. We have another flag down. And Texas is Texas is motioning that it's against the pike. And we'll get the call here in a moment. Illegal formation, defense, number 33, lined up outside the box. Three-yard penalty resulting in... First down. It's, I think it's interesting First. to note, Dan, that we they've had a couple of calls. One time, the defensive end was lined up a little too wide outside of the offensive guard, and he cannot do that in the Arena Football League. He has to be touching. His, his, his body's got to be lined up. And that time, number 33 was out of the box. So it's very important the way you line up here in arena, the Arena Football League. We have a new center in number 50, Bobby Gray out of Rice. Lloyd Hill in motion. Klingler with the handoff. To Wolfolk, not much. It will end up with Jimmy Klingler, number 32, Kevin Wolfolk. Pick up just a couple of uh, yards. You are allowed to substitute once a quarter. So they've just changed out the lineman who had to go both ways, offense and defense. That's a tough, that is a tough play to run. There's really nobody to block Freeney. Freeney is responsible for the fullback, and so he's unblocked, and you just have to hope he guesses the wrong direction, and he was able to come up and make a, a stop for no gain. Bo Adams in a deep motion behind Klingner and dropped by former AM receiver Greg Lewis. I really thought Jimmy Klingler put the ball pretty, threw the ball pretty well and really hit him in the hands. Play was broken up by. And Lewis probably should have made that catch. Let's look here at the replay, Dan. Nice slant pattern. You know, maybe about a foot behind it, but really a very catchable ball, and these guys need to make those catches to keep drives going. Third down and just a little for Klingler. Drops back once again. Looking end zone for Greg Hill. Nice. Greg Lewis, rather nice catch by the former Aggie on the four-yard line. That was a great catch, and the fans are going crazy here. Really put it on the money, a, a deep post pattern down the middle. Let's see that again. The offensive line did a great job. The fullback stepped up and, and helped in the middle. Threw it kind of a little bit over his head, and Lewis just made a fantastic catch, a little bit acrobatic over his head. Just a fantastic catch. And uh, didn't look like he was touched. He may have could have gotten up, but they ended up getting back and touching him before he could get up and uh, get it in the end zone. First down and goal to go. Adams in motion. Klingler hands off to Kevin Wolfolk. Flags down everywhere. He's over the goal line, but we'll see if it's a touchdown, depending on where the flags fell. And again, we talked about rushing before, Doug. It's tough to rush in this league because with an eight-man roster, you don't have two tackles and you don't have a blocking back. So there's not a lot of running. Offsides against Minnesota. Offside. Defense, number 69. Half the distance to the goal. Replay. First down. And this takes away the touchdown, Doug. 
I tell you, Klingler did a great job here with a hard count. The hard counts where you basically change up the cadence, and he got Sheldon Halliburton, who Sheldon was in a training camp with me three years ago with the Houston Oilers. Big number 69 has been off sides twice on this drive. That's why he was only in camp with you. Klingler back, and it's incomplete. The attempt for Bo Adams. Well, in fairness to Sheldon Halliburton, Dan, he's an offensive lineman. And he, he, he's used to knowing the cadence. All right, here's the replay. Jimmy Klinger rolled out a little bit, re reminiscent of his run and shoot days at, at the University of Houston. And uh, Alvin Ashby, Al Alvin Ashby, 